Hello everyone. Um, as I mentioned, I will be live tonight, um, and I will be talking about uh, uh, the three things. Uh, first will be the situation in South Sudan, and and the second will be uh, very much uh, what we suggest of the good democratic uh, team leaders uh, concerning. We are hoping that South Sudan none would be shamed because this South Sudan doesn't mean anything to us. We have no meaning. And in conclusion, I will actually very much believe you about uh, overall situation of African people, uh, black people in general. So these are the three topics I will be talking about. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you. And also I want to greet you in the name of our country, the people that have suffered for too long. Uh, so as the news of the uh, people that suffer for the longest uh, generation and longest suffering in Africa and also entire world. So this uh, very much for those who don't know about South Sudan. And uh, actually, another point I want to make here that I will be briefing a lot in my official uh, page, uh, Bulgai for President. And then the rest of other, uh, my personal would be used for other dialogues, uh, African dialogues, for those who want to uh, look forward to learn or listen to their own uh, mother tongue. So. That would be the focus. But I want to let you know that I've been absent, uh, busy, working really hard, as I always do uh, for the people of South Sudan. Uh, my message has been clear from day one. We've been saying that uh, South Sudan have no fees, there will not be fees in South Sudan uh, until Sal Fakir Ali Mashar leave the public uh, service. That way, you're gonna have hope. You're gonna have the fees. Otherwise, there's no fees in South Sudan. We said this so many times, uh, and I think that our message is uh, very clear, uh, not only to you as the people of South Sudan, also is very clear to the international community. We've been telling them that uh, these two men are the problem of people of South Sudan. Uh, the South Sudanese are the most beautiful people. They are very genuine. They are kind, but they have no leadership, and their leadership in Juba. Uh, is not wanted by the people of South Sudan. And we're demanding the leadership of South Sudan, uh, Fakir Mayadi, to step aside or to step down. That has been our message. We have been consistent. We have been clear. We have been precise that Sal Fakir is not a legitimate president. Even when he extended the term of the office, he did bribe the parliament and, and paid the money so they can extend the term for another three years, in which uh, South Sudanese uh, are not willing uh, to go for another three years with self fakir leadership. Uh, because our people are dying, our people are suffering, our people are living in refugee camp, our people have no education system. Uh, those who are in exile, they cannot pay the fees to attend the universities. Or other school, whether in uh, East Africa, whether in uh, those who went to Egypt who are facing so much challenge and the killing by the Egyptian uh, citizen, uh, and the government is not saying anything about. It. So, basically, what we are saying is that the only solution for the people of South Sudan to have a free country, they got to have democratic election democratic election when the people of South Sudan have to choose a leadership. It cannot be appointed, it cannot be chosen by individual, have to be appointed, have to be elected by the people of South Sudan. And everybody should participate in that campaign. Uh, whoever lost is going to lose, whatever win, win. And then person is going to lead the people of South Sudan. We made it clear not only to people of South Sudan, we made it clear to the international community. I have so many meetings. Most of you see the picture with me every time I go to uh, meetings and with some leaders and Congress and Senate and also the United Nations 
and worldliness that we need because of the one actually pushing the fees in Addis Ababa or Egad. We got to convene them and we have to talk to them and say the only solution is election. And election could not be delayed for another three years or another two years. It got to be within this year. And we told them that election must be suggested to the to the uh, peace negotiator. That election must be only three months to six months. It's not more than it cannot go beyond uh, six months. It cannot go beyond three months because because if we do that, the people of South Sudan are going to die. We are not going to have people. We told the internet community we need election within three months, ninety days. We say ninety days, and we say. If you guys want to fulfill election to be a successful one, have to be done within 100 and 20 days. And we believe in that. Within six months, six months, election could be conducted and it will be successful. We say this several times. We mentioned this. And the people of South Sudan are waiting to elect the leader as the quick democratic chairman. And the candidates, I guarantee you, we are going to win this election. We are going to build the nation. We are going to bring education in place. We are going to build facilities for the uh, health system in the, in the country. We are going to make sure that the road are going to be a good road, that our people are going, we are going to have a construction across the country. We are going to do this. And we know how to do it. How do we know? Because we've been in the West. We see how the West have been built. We're going to do the same thing in Africa. And we've got to do it in South Sudan. We have to start in South Sudan. That has been the call that we have. And that has been the message that we've been uh, delivered to the world. And I think that the world are working real hard to listen to you, people of South Sudan. And I thank the step that they are taking right now that they have to listen to people of South Sudan. And this is the good news, that we need development. We need our nation to be the best nation, not only in Africa, we have to be a best nation in the world. We got to be competitive. We have to work so hard to reach the world stage, to be the first world and being the third world countries. Because the reason we have been described the third world countries because of corruption, Push us back as African because we've been engaging in corruption for too long. The African countries love corruption. That's why they become a third world countries. We cannot be a third world country in the world of technology. We have to move ahead and be with the world leaders and the world uh, nations. That the position we are campaigning upon, we are going to uh, convene the people of South Sudan that if you elect me as your president of the country, I'm going to put South Sudan to be the world nation, not a third world country in Africa. It will never happen. If Bolga is going to be the leader of that country. And I'm confident and I'm very determined to do this. Based on all this I say, and I've been saying all this along, we are not going to wait for Sir Fakir to call election. We are not going to call for Riyak Mashar and Kid to come together. We are not going to wait uh, all this rebellion to take roots in the country. We are going to move in. We are going to jump in. We are going to, to stop this crisis in the country. And my leadership and what we are doing with our team leadership, and I'm so grateful for the young people who are supporting the Quick Democratic Majority Party, who are supporting the candidate Bol Guiding. And I thank you so much, the youth of South Sudan across the world, who are following me all over the, the my Twitter. You are following me in, in Instagram. You are following me on Facebook. What you have to do now in the Quick Democratic website, you have to go and read the manifesto. You read all that we have, the platforms and the objectives and the mission, and what we are going to do in the country. The website is available. You already see that. And you also have to follow me in the Facebook uh, Bolgai for President page because I cannot conform a lot of people in my profile uh, will guide them because that already, already it's limited to 500. I cannot accept anyone anymore. But what have to be done, you have to click follow, follow, follow in the will guide for person. And that page, actually, you could click follow. You will, you will be able to actually know what we are doing, uh, the, our meetings, our gatherings, 
wherever that I may be invited so you can follow up with the information that we have. What are we doing? Again, what I'm waiting for is for the trip that I'm taking to the country, to the, to the South Sudan, and will take a place and a time. And the reason I have to go, I have to go to the refugee scam again one more time. And I have to show to the world that these people, they cannot stay for another two years or three years suffering because Salfakir and Riyang Mashar, they want to dispute, they want to argue. We have no time for them anymore. They must go and they will go. And the public uprising is the only solution. If Bashir left, if Bashir was able to be overthrown by the people of Sudan, Salfakir will be overthrown by people of South Sudan and will run away and will leave the people of South Sudan. Whether he like it or not, that is going to happen. There's no question about it. South Sudanese are not hanging on by themselves. They have leaders they can follow. They have leaders they can follow. If they choose Bolgai to be that leader, Bolgai is going to take them to the Walish. And I'm going to do the mission for you. I have nothing to lose at this point. Because the young people are dying. The youth are dying. The kids are dying. The women are dying. The elderly are dying. What are we waiting for? What are we losing? If you grow up to be a doll, almost 40, almost 30, almost 50, what are you losing? You got kids, those kids, who is going to raise them? What nation are you going to raise them for? What nation they're going to have? That's why you, the father, you, the mother, have a mission to secure that nation for the generation to come. And that's why you need to support somebody who is unified. Somebody wants South Sudan to be united, who know how to make the peace among the South Sudanese. And I've been saying this all along, that the tribe of South Sudan are not the problem. The leadership is the problem. The Aspiala leadership is the problem. And that is what we're in now. And we need to change this leadership by bringing in a new ideology, a new way forward, a new direction, a new chapter. To move the country forward, to move the nation forward. And I've been saying this, our message is very clear. I'm running upon Tom Limit in the office only. And I guarantee you, we are going to have only four years in the office. As the president of the country, you must have only four years, no more than five years. Four years. If you got to be elected for another term, it have to be eight years at least. And that's it. That is your term. There's no way that you can extend another term to have a third term like what happened in Rwanda. We cannot have that in Rwanda. What happened in Rwanda could bring another war in Rwanda. What Paul Gagame did to extend the term and pretend you are the only good guy that can deliver. That is wrong. That is the mindset of dictatorship that killed Africa. We have to set up a term limit and we have to move on and let the generation take over. That is the message that I deliver. And also we are going to run upon the human rights. That we need to respect our human rights. We need to be ahead of the United Nations. We need to be ahead of the United States. We need to be ahead of the UK to make sure that we cannot be told. We cannot be told whether we are going to protect our citizens or not. Why are we leading the people that we cannot protect? Why are we, why are, why are we leading people that we cannot provide the human right protection. That's why my leadership is going to run upon the human rights. That the human rights have to be respected. We put the humanity first to the African people in South Sudan. That you could not be killed by police, you could not be killed by the national security, you cannot be killed by the soldier and get away. No, no way. The citizens are going to be the first people to be respected in the country. And then we follow. That's the platform that I'm running off on. And I'm going to implement that. Based on all this that I said, we are ready to challenge self fakir And we are not waiting. We are not waiting. self fakir the only solution we have for him, he must step down. He must step aside. self fakir must go. That is the message. That is the slogan. There is no more than that. There is no, that is what we are complaining for. self fakir must go. 
He's supposed to call a love in 2018. Now is the time for him to go. So the question is, when is going to go? Well, it could be this year. It could be next month. It could be next year. We don't know. But we are going to make sure that all of them, they must go. That's the message I want to deliver to you guys tonight. And we are working. We are pushing. Most of you need to know this. That we are not giving up because we love the people of South Sudan. Because they die. We are not giving up because we need to store the image of our country. We are not giving up because we need to store the image of our citizen. We are not giving up because we are the greatest people in the world. We are not giving up. And we need to prove that to the world we are great people. We believe in humanity and we love humanity. No one can teach us about humanity. We're supposed to lecture people about humanity, not to be asked to be told we need to go to Addis Ababa. No. Our peace is not in Addis Ababa. Our peace is not in Abuja. Our peace is not in Abasha this time. Our peace is not in, in, is not in South, South Africa. Our peace is in South Sudan. And the peace are the people of South Sudan who are going to decide what leader they want to lead them. That is the message tonight. A second message that I want to deliver. I believe this is the time for us to identify ourselves. Who are we? We need to find ourselves. Who are we? And that's why we need to define the nation name. Because the name South Sudan, it does not mean anything to us. We must change that country to the name that we all agree. What name do we want in this country? Because when you don't have a name, if you actually you have a baby in your house, you cannot name that baby. Who's supposed to name the baby? I think South Sudan with a new baby, we must name that baby to have a name for it. We have a historical name that we have been known around the world. And we believe that if we could change this country to a name that we all agree, that we define ourselves as African people, I think we, have been, we will be blessed by, not only by our God, we, all, we are going to be blessed by our ancestors. Because the, the Sudan, it was not really our name. Sudan was name that was brought by the Arab invasion. The Arab who actually invaded Sudan, give that name to the people of Sudan. And that Sudan, we were not a part, we were not include of it. We were not a part of the system of Sudan. The system of Sudan that made us to fight and resist against it, it was a system that practiced the slavery by enslaving Africans, Sudanese indigenous. By enslaving us, we resist against it. And that resistance been going on for a long time. Some people can tell you, oh, resistance started in 19, 1956. Oh, 19, uh, 1983. This is a big lie. This resistance been going on for too long. It's been going on since, even since the Mahdi time. When Mahdi took over Sudan in 1881, resistance of South Sudanese was there. When Mahdi go and hand the slave in the, in, in the Equatorial region, when they go and hand the slave in Barkaza region, when they go and hand the slave in Abana region, we resist against it. We resist against this. This has been going on for too long. As if you go and read the history, you realize the resistance of South Sudan against the slavery turned today to have a nation called Sudan. It was only to label us that the land of blacks, land of Sud, but we don't own it. We have no legitimacy to own it. That's why they used to call it Belaga Sud. But the question is, who is leading Belaga Sud? It's them, the slave masters. We resist, we got the South Sudan. When we cut the South Sudan off from Sudan, now is the time for us to call that name in a name that we, the people of South Sudan, want to be called. And our historical name, even in the Bible mentioned, the Kush have to be the name. If we call it the United States of Kush, I guarantee you, we are going not only to unite ourselves as the, marginal, as the people of South Sudan, we are going also to include the indigenous from Nuba Mountain, from Blue Nile, from the Abye, from Darfur, all these indigenous people, they will come a part of that union. 
the United States of Christians that I'm praying for and we are pushing for is it will unite the people of South Sudan well they are going to unite the indigenous people of Sudan because I guarantee you Bolivia is coming in to follow up the CPA with love by Garam self-determination of these three regions must be done the self-determination of Nuba Mountain, the self-determination of Blue Nile, the self-determination of BIA must be done. Have to be done. And I will do it. Will internet the community? I will do it. And you guys are going to see this. Bola guy is going to achieve the BIA and Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile to be a part of South Sudan. And that way we're going to have what they call the United States of Kush. And the United States of Kush is the nation that is going to unite us as the indigenous people of Africa. And we are going to work to protect the Africa continent. Africa continent right now, there is no leader in that continent. No one we can trust in Africa to lead us. And I want this message to for people of South Sudan to, to, to know this. We have no community in Africa that we can trust. We have no leadership in Africa we can trust because the African leadership do not understand the disease and the cancer of Africa. They don't know Africa is sick. But what, what kind of sickness? They don't know. We, the people of South Sudan, know. And that's why we fought for more than 50 years. No Africa country ever support us in the battle. But we thank Ethiopia for giving our people base at that time. And that's why I want you to know that the nation, that we're going to have our own names, we are going to have authority, we are going to be proud of, and now the Arab invaders, they're not going to brag about it, they give us names. We're the one actually African, decide to have our own names. Now we are fighting backs. We are going to tell them enough is enough. The African land, the heart of Africa is not yours, it's ours. You live with us as African or get out and live in the peninsula. Because actually, if you live in the heart of Africa called Sudan today, which is going to be the United States of Kush, based on our dream in the Kush Democratic, and we're going to, we are not going to push the South Sudan for this, we are going to ask them voluntarily. We're going to, we're going to have so many names that have to be suggested. And they're going to vote. What name do we want? What name that is going to unite us in, in order for us to unite Africa? We're going to set it up because Africa will be united by people of Sudan. Not by people of Ghana, not by people of Nigeria, not by people of South Africa, not by people of, of, of Uganda, not by people of Kenya, because the Sudan is the base and foundation of the black man. Sudan is the foundation of civilization at the time. Sudan is the, the land of mankind. When it was Kush, Nubian, Ethiopia, you name it. It's the land that brought the humanity. And that's why they, that land, if it cannot come back to unite Africa, Africa would not be united. And that's why we believe we need to unite Africa based on our platform and that's why the United States the union of our indigenous people of Sudan from South Sudan to all these three regions and even plus Darfur that we're going to protect Africa we're going to protect Sudan we are going to protect the United States of Kush we are going to protect Africa we are going to have a humanity and human rights have to be respected in Africa and that what is we are going to push for and I want to share this with people of Africa and my last conclusion, I knew what is killing Africa is the thing that we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. And this is very sad that the African don't talk about the issues that are destroying the continent. We've been talking about European for too long. We talk about the white man for too long. And we never talk about the Arab man. We never talk about the Arab invasion that took all the North Africa. They took uh, Niger uh, they, they took uh, Egypt away from us. They took Algeria from us. 
they took uh, Libya from us, they took Tunisia away from us, and they are taking entire North Africa, and they even expand toward the West Africa, and they, we are fighting over Sudan today. And now the, the, the challenge in Sudan is whether Sudan have to be Arab and Islamic state or Sudan have to be African state. That have been the fight for too long. That the fight that people of Lago engage with people and like William Daniel engage, come along, John Garang engage. Now our generation has come, got caught and come in again. So we believe that the African need to address the issues of the Arab invasion. The African must put education system across Africa but the Islamic Arab slave trade have to be put as a curriculum so our young people need to understand what Arab have done to African people. The Muslim Arabs have enslaved more African than the West and by the way the Arab before the European went to Africa in the 1400 the Arab that was living in Africa in 900 century. 900 century Arab that was living in Africa before Europeans. So imagine from 1400 to 900 already the Arab that was living in Africa. And we never put that in the books. We have to talk about it. Not only we have to talk about it, we need to put this in the school. That's why you're seeing African leaders in the African Union that will never talk about it. You see in the African radio, when they talk, they don't talk about this issue. When you think African dictator leaders, they don't talk about this issue. And that's why Africans are dying. That's why Africans are running away from the continent because they have been oppressed by the Arabs. Because Arabs want the land, they don't want the people. And that issue of the Arab have to be brought to the table. And we are asked of all the African world, whether you live in the United States, you live in Jamaica, you live in Europe, Wherever you live, Arab nation must apologize to African people. And I, my candidate, is asking Arab to demand, uh, demand from Arab leagues to, 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 to apologize to the European Union, apologize to the United Nations, and apologize to African. If they don't do it, we African are going to stand up, stand up to confront this issue. These folks, the slave hunters, who have done this, not alone I was a victim of this. There are so many young people from Sudan and South Sudan have been a victim of slavery. And the slavery still exists today in, Lib in, Lib in Libya. And the slavery still exists today in North Africa. And the slavery still exists today in, in Middle East. You see, I met uh, a congressman, one of the congressmen that I knew, that I met with uh, two weeks ago. He just come, he went to uh, Libya, he went to uh, Syria, and then Iraq, and then he went what, He went to other, Qatar and uh, Emirates, and then he came to the U.S. So I met with him. He grieved me by the situation that he met Africans in those lands. And he told me that, you know, I met this African young woman who was crying in the airport in, uh, in Emirates. United Emirates, and her passport was taken away from her. She had nowhere to go. And she sa he said that when I was trying to board my plane, this young lady saw me and ran toward me and asked me whether I could help her. She said she'd been running across the country because the man actually uh, lied to her, took the passport away from her. And she said that he said that I was traveling and I couldn't do a lot. But I feel sorry. They left that African are living in the Middle East right now. Whether in Kuwait, whether in Dubai, whether in Egypt, whether in Saudi Arabia, the African are still a slave in those lands. The question is when do African are going to unite? and ask the Arab nation and Arab leagues. I think the time has come. The time has come for us to confront Arabs. The time has come to question Arabs. The time has come for Arabs not to lie again, 
that European are the problems. The time has come. A time is now. As a candidate of this country, we are going to stand up to question Arab existing in North Africa. And I will guide. My proposal is very clear. The Arab youth, they will never participate in African Cup of Nation. They will never participate in, Arab, in African Cup of Nation until they apologize to African people for what they have done to our people. I will not allow Arab youth to participate in the African Cup of Nation ever. And that is my proposal to the African community worldwide in the continent. So these are the things that we need to address. That we let Arab get away with crime. We let the Arab get, Muslim get away with the slavery. And they're still slaving us today. So now our fight is very clear. It's very clear if the African Pongwaza are not talking about it, we are going to talk about it in South Sudan. We are going to talk about it in Sudan. We are not waiting for anybody to tell us what to do. We are going to do this. And that's why I ask you to stand with the boys of people of Kush. Stand with us. Let's address the issue that Africans are afraid to talk about it. And that's why the African corrupt leaders, the dictators, will never talk about the issue that I talk about it. Because African youth are dying on their watch. And they're not doing anything about it. African youth have been enslaved in the white and they're not doing anything about it. The young people who are dying in the Middle East today, they form Kenya and they form Ethiopia and they form uh, and they form uh, Cameroon, they form Nigeria, they form Mali, they form Togo, they form Burundi, and they form Sudan, and they form South Sudan. And no leader ever put this as agenda in African Union. No leader ever put this as agenda in the United Nations. I, Bolgai, I'm going to put the slavery as the first agenda, and it already have been a first my agenda in my campaign. And the African here in America, you need to understand this. That don't let Arab come to America and fool you. Fool you and tell you they are good Muslim. They are bad Muslim. They are worse Muslim. They destroy the African human, uh, human rights. And they keep still doing it now. And my message to African America, you got to listen to those who live in the motherland. People like me. Don't listen to uh, Hali and Umar. Don't listen to her, Talib. Talib is, she's an Arab and she has an Arab agenda to destroy America. And we cannot allow these individual wicked Muslim to come and destroy America because they destroy Sudan. That's why they form what they call uh, Islamic militant, get support from Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Egypt to disable as Africa. That's why you see a Shabab in Somalia. What Shabab really mean? Shabab it means the youth in English. Who give them that name? It was Osama Bin Laden in 1993. That's why some men give them that name called Shabab. And Shabab is in Arabic. Who give Nigerian uh, called uh, Polani a name called Boko Haram? The some Arabs give Boko Haram a name. And that is an Arab name. To disable as Nigeria. Who give Mali Islamic militant names? Even though they speak French. It's not French. It's not that is not trying to give them that name called uh, Jamal, Jamal Ansar. Jamal Ansar is an Arab name. Who give them? The same Emirate and the Saudi Arabia who want to destroy Africa. Now is the time for Africans to wake up. Time is now. And now they're supporting Janjaweed in Khartoum in Sudan. What they call Damasri. What Damasri mean? Where do they come from? What long way do they speak? They come from West Africa. They come from Chad. They are not Sudanese. But because they are there to destabilize the people of Sudan who rise up and demand the freedom and the identity. 
And I want to send this message to all of you, and the African people, and the people of South Sudan, that we are going to work for identity, our African identity. No one should take it away from our motherland. Our Sudan will not be taken away by Saudi Arabia, will not be taken away by Qatar, or Emirates, or Egypt. We are going to stand together to fight for our African heritage. We are going to unite. We are going to work together. We are going to protect one another. And our leadership is going to provide a better education that we are going to put the curriculum to address the Islam, the Islamic slave trade in Africa, and the Arab slave trade in Africa must be put in the table, have to be put in class, have to be put in, in public gathering. If we don't talk about this, Africa will never be safe. If we don't talk about this, we are all African. It's going to run away or die in the Mediterranean Sea before we reach Germany, before we reach Italy, or die or end up in Europe being refugees in a, con in a continent that we, we have been described as the racist toward Africans. The same Europeans that are racist, that we describe as racist, are the same people accommodate us. That's why we're here in, a, in America. That's why we have people in, uh, in, in, in Australia. Almost 3 million in Australia, South Sudanese, with other Africans. And UK. Netherlands. So you have to understand this. The same European that we actually blame that they done slavery, that the same European that accommodate us and give us shelter. The Arab will never give us accommodation. They will not. But by the way, they're taking our land away from us. They're taking African continent away from us. And we are not going to allow them to do it. That's why I believe the reform of Pan-Africanism have to be done now. The fan Africanism that was exist back then it was a dictatorship, authoritarian. Now we are working for fan Africanism that based on democratics and time limit in the office. The African have to understand that the only solution in Africa is democracy, not communist, not socialist, not dictatorship, only democratic system. And we are going to protect the democracy in Africa. As the leader of South Sudan. We are going to provide and protect Africans so they can have freedom in their own land. These are the points that I want to mix. And I thank you. And I hope that this message has been clear. And let's unite. Let's come together. Let's work together. Let's have hope that the change are coming to people of South Sudan. The change are coming to people of Sudan. The change are coming to people of Africa. Indeed, we are going to work with the world leaders. To identify our friend in the world. America is one. One of our friends now is America, United States. We will be our friend because we are the citizens of the United States. America grant us citizenships. 45,000 South Sudanese and Sudanese live in America. All of them are American citizens. And we thank America for that. And the Canadian who have been granted a Canadian citizen, a South Sudan Sudanese, we are going to work with them too. The Australia who gives South Sudanese citizenship are going to work our friend. We are going to work with them too. We are going to work with those who grant the citizenship to our citizens to be our friends, our best friends, our allies. And don't forget Israel, the Jewish state, is going to work with us. Because we are people there. Because they accommodate our people. We are going to work with them too. So I want you to know where we are. We need to identify our friend in the world we're living in. The mistake African made, African leaders made, whether in uh, Rwanda or Togo or whatever, mistake that the African leaders have made, they, could not, they did not identify the right friends that they can work with in the world. Now we... The people of South Sudan are going to identify the right friend that they're going to be our friends. Arab, they've never been our friend. Arab have been the slave masters for us. And let me tell you, regardless what we issue today in America, we complain about it, we're better off. 
We're better off in America than in our land. And we are going to work together and educate our citizens, educate our African people to understand what needs to be done, what we should talk about it. We should not be shy away from the truth and pretend that it's going to go away. It will not go away. If you know disease, it's going to go away in your body until you do something about it. The problem of Africa, that the problem of African instability uh, is not going away because we did not address the Arab invasion, the Arab slavery, and occupation of our land and taking away our people and kill our people and put them in the market. We never addressed that. Not in the books. The first person who wrote the Arab racism in Africa, and it would be, and this book is coming out, the Arab racism in Kush, was Bulgai didn't ever done that. Nobody done it to address the Arab racism. No African leaders, no African author, no African, African leaders, no one ever done it in African history to write about this topic that is so sensitive, except will guide come along and write what they call Arab racism in Kush, in Sudan, and the Arab racism in Africa. Only it come out from the Sudan, come out from the South Sudan. Until Africa need to take that time and listen to us, we are not going to have a time for them. No Africa is going to tell us what they know, because they, they've been doing this for a long time, just we got independent in 2011. We've been fighting all this war all this along. Nobody ever listened to us. What have we been complaining about? It? Until we got independent recently. That's why we don't owe anybody anything. We just want to confront the enemy we've been fighting for too long. The enemy that our grandfather know. The enemy that our ancestors know. When they come to our village, they don't come with pickup truck. They come with camel. They come with donkey. They come with horse, they come with sword. So don't tell me that every African village was attacked by the white man come with pickup truck. No, no way. We know this. Don't fool us. We know what's going on in the motherland. We know what's going on in Africa. That's why we've been telling you, listen carefully before you get deceived again by another slave master. So I want to thank you, my brothers and sisters. Our campaign is real. What we are doing is real. We are looking forward to bring the shame to the country. We are looking forward to bring the shame to the continent. We are looking forward to work to maintain the world peace by working with the right leaders to protect the world peace. We Africa have to be a team player in the world peace. In the world building and we can do this i thank you those who are watching and those who are going to find this video tomorrow i thank you as well for watching this video and i thank all of you tonight and i will leave you with our slogan in the quick democratic we believe that unity is our aims and the victory is our destiny thank you you have a good night.